welcome back to the EH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is Brewing with Underwhelming Commanders, episode 19. And we are starting off this week with Glissa Sunseeker coming in at third place. Two green green, Elf 3-2 with first strike and has tap destroy target artifact if its mana value is equal to the amount of unspent mana you have. So the mana in your mana pool essentially, right? The way this ability works is you're going to have to put mana into your mana pool however much is the artifact that you want to destroy, which isn't that difficult. Like it's a little bit of a workaround, but it really isn't that hard. Obviously, if there's a mana crypt in play, you can just immediately destroy it. You don't have to have anything in your mana pool. If there's a soul ring, now you have to put one mana into your mana pool, then use your commander's ability. And then after you use your commander's ability, now you're free to use that mana however you want, right? So if I'm playing this deck, I'll probably be doing this mostly on my main phase. Let's say I wanted to destroy that soul ring, but I want to cast something that costs three mana. I will put one mana into my mana pool, destroy the soul ring, then put two more and then cast whatever it is I want to cast, right? You have to manipulate a little bit how much mana is in your mana pool. I don't think it's that difficult though to get around this. And being able to just tap your command and destroy artifacts is a pretty powerful ability. Every commander game is going to have lots of artifacts kicking around. But of course, we want to play up this advantage for us. Liquid Metal Torque, one of my favorite cards from this year, is going to be an absolute superstar in this deck because you can tap it to turn target non-land permanent into an artifact until end of turn. So now I can turn my opponent's commander into an artifact and tap my commander and destroy it. The Ristic Study, whatever the case may be. Again, I just have to make sure I have that much mana in my pool. If I want to destroy a Ristic Study, I turn it into an artifact with my Liquid Metal Torque, put three mana in my mana pool, tap my commander, and then just cast something that costs three mana. Liquid Metal Coding as well will work here. This one's not a mana rock, but it turns any permanent into an artifact. So you can do lands here as well. Mirror Land Shaper will also do lands. Tap, target land becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. And of course, lands have a zero mana value so now you don't have to worry about that whole unspent mana thing you can just start destroying your opponent's lands with this combo ashnod's transmorgrant is a nice little one shot here again just a one mana artifact tap sacrifice ashnod's transmorgrant put a plus one plus one counter on target non-artifact creature that creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types again in this deck that becomes like a removal spell obviously our commander is tapping so we want to untap it thousand year elixir mage right stone these are no-brainers. You could also do Scrib Ranger and Quirion Ranger. Both of those will untap our commander once per turn. I really like a card like Emerald Charm in this deck. You know, it's always funny when you find cards like this that really fit what your deck is doing. Of course, like most charms, it has three modes. You can untap target permanent or destroy target non-aura enchantment. Used to be called global enchantments. And target creature loses flying until end of turn. And those first two are very usable in this deck. Obviously, we can use this to untap our commander so we can use its ability again. Again. Also, we're destroying artifacts all over the place, but there's lots of great enchantments in this format as well. So being able to destroy a enchantment with this can also be very useful. I thought, why not throw some more interesting sort of anti-artifact stuff in here, like Sentinel Druid's an interesting one. One in a green human druid, one, one, whenever an opponent casts an artifact spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. I mean, that guy's going to get big pretty quick if you can get him out early. Hidden Gorillas, like I mentioned in my 10 cards videos. One mana enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts an artifact spell, it becomes a 5-3 soldier with trample. So if you can get this out turn one, it's going to be pretty fantastic. Infested Roothold is an interesting one. Four and a green. Wall 3 with Defender has protection from artifacts. Whenever an opponent casts an artifact spell, you may create a 1-1 green insect token. So cards like this, I think, just fit the theme of what they're doing. They're, they're more thematic than anything else, I think it's interesting to put cards like that in a deck like this but you absolutely have to have both viridian revel and magnetic mine in this deck magnetic mine is a card i just mentioned on my 10 cards videos that is really gotten a lot better in recent times because of all those treasure tokens and clue tokens and whatnot and of course in this deck it's extra good because we're destroying our opponent's artifacts all the time so they're going to take two damage with each of them and viridian revel is a card that i have not yet mentioned on my 10 cards video because i haven't gotten to v but i definitely will it is a super sleeper card, I think. And again, gotten way, way better in this current environment in the format. Whenever an artifact is put into opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. And again, 
Your opponent starts sacking a bunch of treasure tokens from their Smothering Tithe. You're going to draw a card for each single one. This is a fantastic card. Even more fantastic in this deck because we're sending artifacts to the graveyard all the time. I would also throw in like a Llanowar Tribe, Yisan the Wanderer Bard. Why? Well, because we do have a lot of untap effects. So having a few more creatures in this deck that have really great tap abilities can be good because we do have that Scrib Ranger. We do have that Thousand Year Elixir so we can reuse those as well. I would say Glissa is definitely an underwhelming commander. Like this ability she's doing is not super fantastic. You know, it is a tap ability. Probably got to wait till the next turn before you can start using it. But you really can go to town with this. It's a little limiting in the mana pool prerequisite there. But other than that, I think you can have a lot of fun with this deck. But moving on to number two is Hakori Dust Drinker. That's right. And I'll just say I actually made this deck. In fact, I made the Glissa deck as well. As it turns out, out. When I did my anniversary video last week, I threw a bunch of free deck lists on there that these are just decks that I just made kind of for myself and for other reasons. And I held back on a few of them because I added them to the poll of my Underwhelming Commanders video. And two of the ones that I held back with were Hakori and Glissa. I had both those decks made and I was going to give them away on my anniversary video. But I thought, well, let's see if they win the poll first. And sure enough, they did get, they got second and third place. So rather than give them away there, I added them here. So I will have the deck list for all three commanders in this video, this special anniversary episode of Underwhelming Commanders, I guess. All three commanders will be below. And the Hakori Dust Drinker one is difficult. You know, I, I was thinking, how do I make a casual deck with this? Can I make a casual deck with this? I mean, two white, white, spirit, two, two. Lands don't untap during their controllers on tap step. That is definitely what a lot of people I think would consider not a very casual ability. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player untaps a land they control. So very staxy, right? This is without question, I think, a stax commander. There really is no other way to go about it. Is this casual? I don't know. That, that's the tough part. The debate will always rage on about these kinds of things. Can you make a casual Hokori Dust Drinker deck? I don't know. Can you make a CEDH Hokori deck? That, I think, is the better question here. And that's what I did. I thought, you know, I haven't done a CEDH deck yet on here. I think, for me, Hokori fits CEDH better. So that's why in this deck that I made... I threw a lot of typical CEDH cards. You'll see Angel's Grace and Deafening Silence and stuff like that in here. Sort of that Staxy, hose your opponent, stop them from doing what they want to be doing, right? I got Archon of Emeria and Hushbringer. You know, whether you went with a more casual version of this deck or not, I would throw these cards in. Like, I would probably take out the Angel's Grace and the Deafening Silence because those aren't as good in a casual environment. Archon of Emeria and Hushbringer are still pretty good in a casual game. So is Suppression Field and Mana Web. Both of those are going to be fantastic here. Suppression Suppression Field, man, that card doesn't get played enough in a, in a stacks environment if you're doing it. It's so good. One and a white enchantment. Activated abilities cost two more to activate unless they're mana abilities. That's all activated abilities, right? Even a Planeswalker, you have to pay two mana to activate it. Really fantastic card. Hoses a lot of strategies. And Mana Web, I just talked about again in my 10 cards video, fits really well here because it's going to make your opponent tap all their lands down if they want to cast anything. So obviously that fits. So I would probably include these cards even if I didn't go more of a CED wrote it always depends on your play group with these kinds of things is your play group going to be okay with a Hikori dust drinker deck i mean even if you went spirit tribal with this still your commander is making your opponent's lands not on tap i mean everyone's lands not on tap are they going to be okay with that if they are great if not this version that I made is a CEDH version. I have a couple of win cons in here, which I typically wouldn't play in a casual deck like Helm of Obedience and Rest in Peace. I already had the Rest in Peace because obviously it's probably the best graveyard hate card ever made and Helm of Obedience will combo with it, right? It'll mill your opponent out so they lose the game. I also have Dranith Magistrate and Uba Mask. Already had the Dranith Magistrate because it's a great fit in any CEDH deck, really in almost any commander deck to be honest. And Uba Mask will lock your opponents out, right? If a player would draw a card, that player exiles the card face up instead, and they may play that card, right? So with a Dranith Magistrate out, your opponents can't cast spells anywhere other than their hands, so now instead of drawing cards, it doesn't lock them out from playing the game, it just locks them out from drawing more cards. Any card they draw, even off of Heuristic Study or whatever, is going to get exiled instead, and now they can play it from exile, but they can't play it from exile if Dranith Magistrate is out, so that's a great combo there in a CEDH style deck. Again, I don't think I would play this in a casual game. But whatever scenario you go with, I think a blink scenario is really fantastic with Hikori, right? If 
you wanted to make a more casual version of a Cory, and I did this in my Mavinda deck. If anyone here checked out my Mavinda Students Advocate deck tech that I did way back in April, I thought that, you know, I blink strategy was great there because Mavinda allows you to cast instant sorcery cards from your graveyard for essentially their initial cost as long as it's targeting your own creatures, right? If it's not, it's going to cost eight more, so you probably don't want to do that. And I thought a blink strategy worked great there. Blink spells, you're always targeting your own creatures, right? So you can reuse them from the graveyard. And I put Hakori in that deck because Hakori was like a win con in that deck because blinking works great with Hakori where I exile my Hakori on my opponent's end step. And you have to make sure because there are different kinds of blink spells, right? Like a liberate, for example, is exile target creature. You control return the card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. That's the wording you want because you want to exile your commander on your opponent's end step and then it won't come back until your end step. So obviously that means on your untap, all your lands will untap normally. And that's sort of the advantage for you. You otherworldly journey, you exile your commander on your opponent's end step. It won't come back into play until your end step. So during your turn, everything untaps normally. You can just have a normal turn. On your end step, it comes back into play and then of course hoses all your opponents. So Mavinda is in this deck. So I think it's interesting to have a CEDH level deck with Mavinda in it. Can you play this in a casual game? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Can you play this in a CEDH game? I don't know. Give it a try if you play CEDH and you think it'll work there. I have played some CEDH, so I am aware of sort of the things that happen there and what you need to put in a deck to basically slow down your opponents, right? Nevertheless, that's the version I made. That's the deck list in the description below. If you want to sort of take some of the ideas, like I said, I think a blink strategy works great with Hakori because you blinking out your commander so that your land's on tap. That strategy I really like. If you want to make a casual version of this deck, that's the only thing I think that would maybe work here. But moving on to our number one commander this week, and it is Krond the Dawn Clad. And, and this one, honestly, funny enough, I didn't have a deck list for. This one I had not previously made. I had to actually make this deck list. So it's kind of funny. The only one that I had to make a deck list for, I didn't already have. I had I already had a deck list for the other two. Nevertheless, like I said, all three are in the description below. So Krond is, you know, that's a commander that I saw quite a bit back in the day when I first started playing commander because it has a really powerful ability, right? It's three green and three white. That's a whole lot of pips, right? Six mana, Archon 6-6. Six, six. Flying and Vigilance. Whenever Krond the Dawnclad attacks, if it's enchanted, exile target permanent. That's a really powerful ability. I made a Krond deck way back in the day, and I played it, and... You know, my commander just couldn't stay on the table. That was a big part of it. People just don't want their permanents exiled. And I even had one guy's like, yeah, I don't want my lands getting exiled. And I'm thinking, why would I exile your lands with a crond? Like, you think about the amount of removal and like a beast within or something that can hit any permanent. How often do you use that on land? Almost never, right? I mean, it happens, but typically you're going to use that on a creature or an enchantment or something. Same with Krond, right? If I have a Krond deck and I'm attacking it, why would I waste it on someone's lands? I'm going to exile more threatening permanents that are on the table. And, you know, exile one permanent per turn is is definitely good. You know, it really has fallen off this guy. He used to be a lot more popular. Now you never see him. Has almost no decks on EDH rec now currently. And is it because of that people don't want to play a commander that's exiling permanents because it makes you a target? I don't know. Nevertheless, people are going to want to get your commander off the table without question. So we got to be able to protect it. And the Umbras are the best way to do that, right? It's going to fulfill the, you know, enchanting our commander that we want. But also, if our opponents want to remove it, now it will be protected. So I got all the Umbras in this deck. I also have Umbra Mystic so that any of our other enchantments that we put on our commander will turn into totem armor as well. It's going to protect against those destroy damage effects, at least. You know, that's something. Shield of the Oversoul is another perfect in this deck as long as enchanted creature is green it gets plus one plus one and has indestructible that's going to be really important if it's white it gets plus one plus one and it's flying which it already has flying it is going to be an eight eight so that's formidable now it becomes a three hit kill I think probably this is more of a Voltron strategy and you're going to close the game out with commander damage I also got asceticism in here and Sarath the Viper's Fang. Both of these are going to be super good in this deck. I love how it curves out, right? Serith costs four, Asceticism costs five. So both of these we can slap down the turn before we cast our commander so that as soon as our commander hits the table, it's going to have Hexproof. Asceticism will also allow us to regenerate it. And Serith is particularly good here because our commander has Vigilance. So other untapped creatures you control have Hexproof. So our commander will always have Hexproof because it's always going to be untapped. 
It's not going to get the death touch because it's not going to be tap, but I, we're not that concerned about that part. We're more concerned about the hexproof. Also through Alpha Authority in here, one in a green or enchant creature. Enchanted creature has hexproof and can't be blocked by more than one creature. It is surprisingly rare to have enchantments that grant hexproof. It is really, really rare. This is the only one. In Celestia Colors, this is the only enchantment that grants hexproof. So it's got to go in the deck, right? We, we want to preferably, I know you're going to be really tempted to cast your commander immediately as soon as you hit six mana you probably don't want to unless you have Seraph in play or some other protection effect I would make sure you have at least one protection effect in play before you cast your commander because I really think it's going to be a target so you might want to wait till eight mana where I can cast my Krond and then immediately put Alpha Authority on it. A couple other great enchantments. Obviously, Rancor is just a no-brainer in a deck like this. You know, we want it to be cheap. We want to cast our commander, put a, an enchantment on it right away. One with Nature's are another great one that I mentioned in my 10 cards video. Only costs one green mana. When enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped. So obviously, we're going to be getting in for damage a lot. And Still Energy is probably one of the best ones. This might be the best one in the deck. I mean, it doesn't add protection protection. So I, I won't say it's the best one, but what it does do is allow us to attack with our commander right away. And the wording on this card has changed quite a bit. I also threw this in the Glissa deck as well because it untaps creatures. That part's not important here. The important part here is Enchanted Creature can attack as though it had haste. And of course, it's one mana. So we cast our commander. And as long as we have that one green mana, we can throw this on our commander right away and it can attack immediately. It's enchanted so we can immediately exile a permanent. And I want to at least get, you know, a couple of exiles exile effects out of our commander before it gets removed off the table preferably also through crashing drawbridge in here as well because that's a great way to give haste in you know non-red colors and of course we're in a bit of an enchantment tribal deck so i gotta throw Sifis harvest hand in here satyr enchanter you know you have to have some of those enchantress effects i also threw cards in like birth of Miletus because you know it's gonna go get us lands and stuff but it's a enchantment right so if we're gonna do that why not do it in enchantment form so that we can get a card draw off of one of our enchantresses i I thought Light From Within was another great fit here. Another card I just mentioned in my 10 cards videos. Each creature you control gets plus one, plus one for each white mana symbol in its mana cost. And our commander's got three. That's right. Our commander is going to get plus three, plus three from this. So it's going to be minimum a nine, nine. That's pretty darn good. And then on top of that, it's also an enchantment. So it's fitting the enchantment theme. So, I mean, man, if we can throw a Rancor on our commander as well, and that's a two hit kill. I think that's pretty good. And I threw like Curse of the Silence. I thought was a really neat card from Innistrad Midnight Hunt that I almost mentioned in my top cards from the set one mana or a curse enchant player as curse of silent enters the battlefield choose a card name spells with the chosen name enchanted player cast cost two more to cast and when enchanted player cast the chosen card you sacrifice this and draw a card so i thought this was a good fit you know i like this card you can you find the person at the table that has a really annoying commander that you don't like and you just name that and they're gonna have to pay two more it's gonna slow them down and then when they finally do cast their commander which they eventually will you sack this and get the draw cards so it replaces itself. It's also an enchantment. So it's fitting the enchantment. Also an aura. So we're going to get a card draw off of our core spirit dancer, right? Whenever you cast an aura spell, you may draw a card. So we get a card draw off of it because it is an aura. And of course, core spirit dancer is going to be a fantastic fit in here as well. Also gets plus two, plus two for each aura attached to it. And, you know, we, we don't want to just rely entirely on our commander. It is going to be nice to have a couple other creatures that we can throw these auras on. A couple other things we're doing in this deck. I threw Stranic Resonator in here you know this is a card that you could throw in i mean any deck that has a commander with a triggered ability which it there's like a thousand of them and i, I don't even think i'm exaggerating them that much this card used to see a ton of play if this is a case though where i am going to make room for it right our commander has a really powerful triggered ability right exiling a permanent whenever it attacks that's a triggered ability and we can copy that triggered ability and exile another permanent right if my commander has a really really powerful triggered ability i'm going to find room for stranic resonator of course we got to have board wipe so let's pick the board wipes that fit what we're doing. Winds of Wrath is a no-brainer here because it's going to destroy all creatures that aren't enchanted. So our commander survives. And I also threw Cataclysm in the deck. And again, this is, you know, is this a casual card? I don't know. If you don't think this is a casual card and you don't want it in this deck, you, you know, your playgroup's not going to like it. Replace it with Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, right? That, which you could also work in this deck. This to me, though, is a great game ender in this deck. I'm not going to throw this in any deck. This is the deck where I think it's a perfect fit. The Lord Conda deck that I made, I thought it was also a great fit there. You know, I thought, why not put it in a deck where it's actually a great fit? Because when you cast it, each player chooses 
from the permanence they control a creature, an enchantment, an artifact, and a land and sacrifices the rest. So everyone gets to keep one artifact, one creature, one enchantment, and land. And of course, if they don't have artifacts, creatures, or enchantments, they won't have those at all. But maximum, everyone's going to have one artifact, creature, enchantment, and land. And of course, you're going to keep your commander, which is your creature, and you're going to keep whatever enchantment is enchanting your commander, right? And obviously a land and an artifact if you have that. But the important part is you have your commander, who is a giant flying vigil blocker that can also attack and exile a permanent. So whatever your opponents choose, right, you're going to cast this on your first main phase, and after everything gets sacrificed, whatever the most threatening permanent that has remained on the table, now you can exile that immediately after everyone has sacked everything else. I mean, it's going to be pretty hard for your opponents to come back from this. Even if they 3v1 you, it's going to be really difficult. And this is the situation where yeah, maybe you could exile their lands now because they only have one. Is it casual? You know, it's up to, again, just like with the Hikori scenario, it's up to each individual and pod to decide whether they want to see a card like that. You know, if I'm playing against a Kron deck, I'm not going to be upset about this play, I think. I think it's a great play for a underwhelming commander. I don't know. Is this underwhelming? I think it's pretty good. Exiling permanence is pretty good. Definitely unpopular. No question. Really unpopular. I'm actually shocked how unpopular it is. I haven't seen it in forever. Is it because of the, you know, arch enemy sort of scenario where you're just going to turn into the arch enemy when you play it? Maybe that's the case. I don't know. People don't like having their permanence exiled, of course, but there's lots of other things in the format that are exiling permanence. So give it a try if you want to. Like I said, the deck list for all three of these guys are in the description below. Give it a try if you want to. And if you like the way I build decks, I have a Patreon where I build decks for my patrons. I also do deck doctors where I give my patrons advice on their already made decks and what I would change, what I would fix. I got my Discord, which I'm doing gameplay on now. Lots of exciting stuff happening. So that link is also in the description as well. And you also help support the channel if you like what I'm doing here. But that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you.